NATO missile launches in Ukraine is controlled remotely, Russians point to the US. Russian military correspondent Alexander Sladkov recalled that when last year in the Bryansk region, forces of the Russian Guard defeated a sabotage group of the main intelligence directorate of the armed forces of Ukraine, the captured militants said that their task was to install loaded and camouflaged drones kamikaze near a certain object. It was expected that within the next few days, drones will be activated by a signal from the NATO space group, after which they will be directed to their intended targets. Based on this, Sladkov suggests that NATO missile launchers in Ukraine could possibly be controlled remotely from another country and even from another continent. Thus, Western missiles can strike Russian territory outside the plans of the Ukrainian armed forces, but according to the plans of Washington or London. According to Sladikov, thus, it is obvious that the missile launchers supplied to the Kyiv regime are controlled by Americans, US Army retirees who, without NATO responsibility, have the opportunity to strike Russia. The Americans can carry out the strikes, but Kyiv supposedly does everything. The military correspondent asks questions in this situation what Russia should do in the current situation. Just remain silent and shoot down wasting your arsenal on it, or resort to an asymmetrical response, using a wide range of available means? Under the second option, Ukraine, in fact, will have to answer for NATO's actions directed against Russia. Ukraine is now allowed to use Western weapons to hit targets inside Russia. Up until now, Western countries restricted the use of their weapons to military targets located inside Ukraine, including Crimea and occupied territories. They were concerned that attacking targets across the internationally recognized border with weapons provided by NATO countries would escalate the conflict. But the latest Russian advance in the northeastern Kharkiv region convinced Kyiv's allies that in order to defend itself, Ukraine must be able to destroy military targets on the other side of the border as well. Ukrainian forces returned to their positions north of Kharkiv, the Ukrainian armed forces counterattacked in the Globoko area. This was reported by the American Analytical Center Institute for the Study of War. According to the Institute, on June 13, the Ukrainian armed forces regained control over positions north of Kharkov, despite the continuation of Russian offensive actions in this area. Geolocated footage released on June 13 shows Ukrainian forces conducting a counterattack and recapturing positions southeast of the village of Globoko. Russian military bloggers confirmed counterattacks by Ukrainian forces in the area, noting that it was making matters worse for Russian troops. In addition, Russian sources reported counterattacks by the defense forces in and around Volchensk, although they claim that Russian forces advanced 1.8 kilometers along a 4.5 kilometers wide front north of Volchensk. It is also reported that the Russian armed forces have introduced reserves into the northern part of the Kharkov region, although their volume remains unknown. A Russian source said that units of the 155th Marine Brigade are operating near Volchensk, although they were fighting in the Marinka area in early June. This may indicate a redeployment of units from Donetsk to Kharkov to strengthen Russian troops in this region. In the Kupiansky direction, clashes occurred in the areas of Sinkovka, Petropavlovka, Peskany, Stelmakovka, Myasozorovka, Berestov, Druzhelibovka, Nevsky, Grakovka and Sarabryansky forestry.